so much to thank you for. But before I start, uh, while I got you all awake, Annette, uh, I just want to uh, make an apology to anyone that I may have hurt over the years. Um, I know, I know I've been here for 10 years and I know there's probably people that I've hurt. And I want to apologize to you for anything that I might have done or maybe didn't do while I was here. No excuse. I am sorry. Um, I've been, it's interesting that these readings are this day. Today's the Feast of Corpus Christi or in English, the Feast of the Body of Christ. And we hear in this gospel about the multiplications of the loaves and the fishes. And I was reflecting over my 10 years here, how things have multiplied. Now, I hate to say it, I hate to publicly admit it, but uh, uh, I was pretty lost when I got here. <laughs> what to do? And uh, I didn't know anybody, and it was really slow going. I was very slow, and uh, uh, slow to learn who you are, slow to learn the finance council, slow to learn the parish council that stayed with me for that first year. And, uh, uh, you know, trying to figure out what is needed. Uh, and I, and the... Um, Holy Spirit came to me uh, through a man in a parish before me, and he taught me. He said, Chris, if there's anything you do when you do ministry, do Lectio Divina. That's one of the greatest things you can teach people. And so I started off thinking if we're going to do anything, we have to start with prayer. That's what Lectio Divina is. And it's very simple. Uh, you just take uh, a reading like the gospel, which is what we usually did, and we reflected on it and let it touch us however it touched us. And there was no wrong, just however God was leading us in that passage. And to ask some other questions about that passage and answer that. And so uh, I did that. <coughs> We had to pray. We had to center on prayer. And it couldn't be just some rote traditional prayer, but it needed to be us sharing about ourselves. And so in the finance council, we began. began. And in the parish council, a new parish council was formed. And before we could do anything in that parish council, we had to form a small faith community is what we had to do because we have to be what the church is about. And it starts in those small little circles where two or three are gathered. And so we formed a small faith community that would determine what was needed in the parish. The finance council, along with the parish council, hired a new principal, Mary Ann Jones. She has been a gem. And uh, things began to slowly multiply. We did a survey of the parish so we would know what we needed. We had our first parish cafe, and which would later become the parish leadership meeting. Um, uh, we realized in the finance council and the parish council that there was uh, something missing in our personnel. And at first, we thought it was a business coordinator. And so we hired George. And then we realized what we were really missing was a business coordinator and a minister, someone to do ministry. Brenda Bone. Now we were cooking with gas. And from there, we realized some basic needs that we needed to get back to, back to retreats, back to welcome, uh, chirp, which became welcome. 
And then the big need in the parish, we needed to renovate this church. Um, in that experience, I learned so much about collaboration, physically experiencing it in my life and the power of unity when everybody comes together, as I saw so many people in the parish from different organizations working together, and now we have this. So beautiful. You know, I don't know if you think back to the way the church used to look. <laughs> yeah, you see a contrast. Um, so, and I'm forgetting... Uh, uh, youth ministry and how we formed so many years ago uh, with uh, Michelle and Brian Fitzpatrick and Gary Weber and Marie Weber. And without them, there would have been no Steubenville. Without them, there would be no music for the 11 a.m. mass. They were part of getting that, uh, seeing the need for our youth in the parish. And eventually, we would have no Luke 18 without them and a new youth ministry with Matt Collins and the gang. There are so many things. Uh, I can't get into all of them uh, that have grown and multiplied in this parish. And uh, I thank you so much for teaching me that. And I learned that it's very simple. All that we have to do is put in our five loaves and two fish. Put in what we have and it multiplies. To be willing to put in what we have. And that's the thing that so many people don't experience it because they never put in themselves you know, we're afraid we're going to lose what we have. No, it's the opposite. When you give, it multiplies. You taught me to be a parish leader and how we need parish leaders, all of us to be parish leaders. Uh, there are a lot of lost people out there who don't know God, don't know love, don't know there's so much more to life than what is right in front of them and how depressing things are in the world and how life-giving God is when we turn to him. The last thing I want to say, most importantly, I love you. And I have grown in my love for you. And uh, don't kid yourself, I will miss you. I got a little video that uh, I'd like to show. Uh, the kids did this for me and I thought it was kind of cute and maybe you might want to see this. Let it go Let it roll right off your shoulder Don't you know the hardest part is over, let it in Let your clarity define you in the end We will only just remember how it feels Our lives are made in these small hours These little wonders, these twists and turns of fate Small hours, these small hours still.
and turns of fate. It's those little things in life that make the difference that we build on in our life that become the big things. And it's certainly true in my experience of ministry. <clears throat> 